Um, and I'd like to welcome you all to um, the second day of the Opencast Summit. Uh, we start with things focused on uh, recording, capture agents, and so on. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess we start with Ipatios and Lars um, with um, ideas around the inbox, I guess. I have no idea what's coming up now. Um, <laughs> so you're welcome both to start. Okay, thanks. I guess I can take over right away. Uh, Lars, you will be adding then some uh, technical information maybe in the end because, of course, the whole um, uh, developments that we, I will be uh, talking about um, were actually realized then, um, by Lars and Elan. Um, but back to the title of Virtual Capture Agent, which is a bit tricky in itself. Um, <clears throat> subtitle I chose Telgrad Tube, so our Opencast system in a quest to full-ish automation. So in order to manage to have a system that pretty much, you know, does the whole workflow automatically. So before uh, going to um, the current development um, themselves, I would like just to give a brief overview of how our statistics look at the moment. I presented pretty much the same graph, uh, minus the two last columns, of course, in the last uh, summit. So we could see there the spike and the jump, but now uh, we see also a certain stabilization. So in our case, uh, around 5,000 or 45,000 recordings per semester. Uh, uh, just, just, we still see the uh, first slide. If you switch oh. over, I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. Sorry. Wait a minute. Um, oh, that's weird. Hmm. Let me try something else. Oh, it's bad. I have, of course, a PDF backup, which I will try to use now. <laughs> It still runs on Facebook, <laughs> on Facebook, oh God, on Firefox, I mean, but let's see. Um, okay. So uh, let me try now. Oh, doesn't look good. But I will try to do what uh, Rudiger said before, so I'll try. I will start first in presentation mode and then share the screen. Uh, okay, let's see now. Oops. Oh. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you see the same as I do, but it only, this slide. it only partially uploaded uh, or updated the slide. If you see, let me try the next one. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. 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 Let me, um, let me do something different. Sorry about that. I'll try to, hmm, how can I do that? Hmm. You said you had a PDF, um, then hit on the uh, plus sign in the left, uh, bottom left corner of the black area, and they can upload your PDF. And then you have, uh, everyone gets that. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, let me try this. Um. Sorry for this. Um. Oh. 
Okay, that should be it. Let's see. Upload. And you should stop uh, the screen sharing. Yeah, okay, let me do that now. Yeah, that's okay. Fine. Ah, that's that looks good. Okay, then I can use also a single screen for that. That's even better for me. So, sorry about that. I'll try to be um, swift now. Um, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to give an idea of uh, how um, um, publications uh, on our tube system, our opaca system, look at the moment. So, it's what I presented also last time. Now we seem to be stabilizing um, in, a, let's say, a reasonable value, uh, about a thousand percent more than the previous years. <laughs> Um, well, our idea in order to be able to co accommodate this new reality um, was, as we had always as a motto, to give power to the people. And how did we manage to achieve that? Hopefully, was uh, mainly um, the bridging of Moodle and Opencast. As we use Moodle also as uh, an LMS, we have been using the plugins that bring those two um, wonderful systems together. And uh, we have managed to to cope with this type of um, uh, increase in publications. There is still, though, one um, aspect or let's say component component of the OpenCast system that we were not able to take advantage of, and this is the scheduling part, or if you if you will, the capture agent part. So. Um, how it works uh, very briefly is that you have your schedule, you're able to uh, enter your schedule in the admin node by the admin UI as a OpenCast admin. Um, and uh, then there is the ad, uh, capture agent part where um, different devices, usually computers, computer devices with uh, capturing abilities are then deployed in the different recording venues and automatically check that schedule from the admin node and uh, execute scheduling uh, um, rec recording tasks accordingly. This we have not really been able to do in our case um, because we realized that uh, our lecturer, lecturers were not very happy with the idea of uh, being recorded by an automatic system. They wanted to be able to to start and stop the recordings themselves. So with this, we have uh, we had to leave that, let's say, the default use of the capture agent parts from OpenCast from the beginning. So what we used to do, though, uh, we tried to find something that's as, clo as close as possible to this. So um, we, we use certain recorded devices in our venues uh, with um, a feature that's called automatic file upload, which means you can set them up in a way that um, after each recording is done, then it's sent to a specific um, server storage uh, point and so on. Um, so we took that and we combined that with, uh, as I understand, an, a relatively underestimated feature of OpenCast up to now, at least, uh, or at least outside of two grads, um, which, is which is OpenCast Inbox. Um, I think the full name is a bit different, but anyway. Um, so what this does, in case you don't know, is that uh, you can set up, it's in the main um, OpenCast config, we just have to activate, and you can set up a specific storage point um, folder, and it will be uh, checked um, uh, periodically for video recordings there. And those video recordings can be ingested in OpenCast according to a, a fixed set of configuration that you can also um, set in this uh, OpenCast Inbox config file. So what we did was, um, as, as I also write here in my notes, um, the, the automatic recordings, um, no, no, the, rec the manual recordings actually from, from, from the lecture rooms were uh, automatically ingested then in uh, OpenCast via, via this OpenCast Inbox, but they were all dumped in a inbox series, um, you know, naming for obvious reasons. Yeah? But of course, they were not published. Um, we had to then manually assign them and publish them as a team. 
So um, now coming to the idea of a cap capture agent, we thought, okay, since we do have the essential information, which is scheduling information, and we have the recordings available in OpenCast uh, via the OpenCast inbox. The only missing link is actually to get to, for OpenCast to know, so to, to know two things mainly, huh? the location and the timestamp, which are two essential things also for the scheduling. We used to, to have it all uh, in a Nextcloud calendar. We used to do this manual checking by ourselves. Um, but then we thought, yeah, there must be there must be a way to do that. Yeah? Then I spoke with Lars, <laughs> and he told me, of course, you should have said that before. Of course, we can do it. It's very easy. We can do it uh, in one hour or so. No, just kidding. Um, well, and then you just need to uh, extract the metadata from the incoming um, recordings. Let's say that you have an arbitrary format of incoming recordings, so they have to have some kind of metadata, right? And then compare that to your schedule and then assign them accordingly. But this time, automatically, of course, not by hand. So one other thing that was missing, and then uh, Lars also helped me, I was to, to point to me the fact that, uh, uh, because I asked at the, uh, the beginning, uh, I don't even see this scheduling in, in our, our admin UI. Of course, you cannot see that um, unless you have already um, capture agents installed in the system, uh, which appear as locations when you schedule an event. So if you go to add an event and open the scheduling or arrive to the scheduling window, then you'll see a drop down list uh, of locations according to your uh, registered capture agents. Uh, what I didn't know, and uh, Lars told me about, is that you actually can manually and semi-legally add virtual, and now we come to the title, virtual capture agents at will uh, via the API. So I had to play a bit around there with the system after uh, that, that tip, and then we realized, okay, we can actually add virtual uh, fake uh, capture agents in order to be able to use a scheduling system then. Yeah? And uh, we use the same uh, names and codes for that as we get also from the recorded, recorded files from our uh, venue. So and this is where things come together. And after the developments um, by Lars and Ellen, which in effect is actually an enhancement of the OpenCast Inbox module itself, um, we have managed to, um, to make this part also automatic. This was, uh, this was, of course, essential for us. So now what we have is that we do the scheduling directly in OpenCast. We don't need to use an external calendar anymore. The ingestion assignment publication is done automatically, as I said. And as for us, we sit back and watch ish because of course you cannot expect that everything works perfectly, especially from the very first uh, deployment. Uh, but in general, I have to say in this direct feedback also to you, Lars, that uh, the beginning of the semester went quite well. So thank you for this. Uh, you really made the team happy. <laughs> that's good to hear because that's my initial feedback for this new feature. So <laughs> right, right. Um, so I guess then I'll take over for the technical part. Uh, so to uh, share my shell and scare people away or something like that. Um, and yeah, uh, as Patius mentioned, it's mostly an extension to the um, to the inbox itself, and we can take a look at this in in a second. Um, but first, let me just show you my local cast here um, because prepared something. Um, and this is just an open cast where I've scheduled an event and the event is scheduled um, for the capture agent HS1. And um, yeah, it, it's scheduled for um, January the 7th, uh, 2022. And uh, for doing that, well, I've, I've just scheduled that the usual way and I've registered the HS1 capture agent in advance, and you can just do that as Ipati has mentioned via the API. This is, by the way, the official capture agent API. So 
nothing illegal going on there. Uh, it, it's just a simple call where you can say, okay, um, hey, you know, I'm a capture agent. I have a specific name. My current status is, in this case, idle, uh, but you could theoretically use whatever you want. Um, and, and then you can schedule events for this. Um, and so, yeah, I did. And now let's uh, switch to my shell and take a look at what happens if you configure this. So here we go. Um, first thing we may want to take a look at is that I have a file prepared, which is called hs1 underscore uh, generate servants underscore and, and so you already see that in this file uh, there is a capture agent name and there's a date and in theory you could even uh, extract more data from this and this is the key idea of here we extract some metadata from these files uh, which are put into the inbox and that is something we can then use later on for uh, matching the schedules and in fact we can not only use the file name now uh, you already see that I have FFPro command here prepared. And if you just run that and look at what we get back, you see that there are more metadata in here. Obviously, these are not guaranteed metadata, um, but a lot of capture agents or recording devices put them in there. And there's, for example, the uh, creation time, uh, which gives us a, a really accurate exact time of, of when this was created. Um, and there are other things we could use as well. So uh, if you now take a look at the new configuration for the inbox. Uh, you still see the old configuration, but at the bottom, there's now a section called metadata matching. And what this basically does is um, it will, will pick up these data and you can configure this in different ways. Um, you should also know that if you don't configure anything, the inbox will behave exactly like it did before, like it did in previous versions. So nothing changes, you have to actively uh, turns this on because, um, well, weird things can happen if you don't expect that. So we decided that these should be disabled by default. And the first thing is here is that you can define a regular expression. Um, I've already did that. So I said, okay, I want uh, the spatial information, which is double core information for the capture agent um, and the title. I don't uh, extract a date here because um, if I'm going down now, I can also uh, configure things like date formatting, for example. But what I just did is I turned FFprobe extraction on. Um, so I said, okay, yeah, run an FFprobe to get this additional information we just had to look at. Um, and you can do more things like uh, schedule matching. This is actually important to turn it because remember we have a scheduled recording, we want to match this against. And you can also do a little bit of fuzzy matching. So if someone runs five minutes over time, um, that's, uh, and there is a, a next recording scheduled directly after that, that it not, not get, uh, matches this with the, the second event or something like that. So yeah, that's something we have set here. And you see already here's a up and running open cast. You also see that this Dublin uh, debug logging is turned on for the inbox or for the ingest serves actually. Um, and I did that because now we can actually follow what happens. And now I just copy this file um, into the inbox. And uh, what will happen now is that we have to wait a few seconds for the inbox to pick this up. And here we go. And you've already seen that there's um, some additional information here in debugging. Um, First thing you probably notice is that there's an exception, which absolutely makes sense because it uh, complains that there is no created. But remember, we did not um, configure a created field in the regular expression. Um, but yeah, it's picked up. Um, you also see uh, that it's then running FFprobe. It's extracting metadata from this file. Uh, it extracts the duration. It extracts the creation time. Um, and then uh, it's trying to find a schedule event for this. Uh, and the next uh, line is then, well, it did find a schedule event for this to match this against, and it's using this event and all its metadata for ingesting. So um, that is basically what a capture agent would do. Um, and if we switch back to uh, Opencast again, um, 
as we'll see, uh, the event is now being processed. So yeah, um, it luckily did work um, and we can do that. And uh, this is a way to, um, even if your recording device does not support the option cast capture API, you may still be able to use this um, to get uh, some additional metadata and, and match metadata and don't have to run behind your schedules and, and fix them afterwards. So yeah, that's it from the technical point of view. Uh, this is in Opencast 11, uh, so you can use that. Um, and let me take a quick look if there are any questions. Um, I think this one was uh, from Stefanos, uh, and I think it's for me, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, no, we don't have any non-virtual capture agents, if that answers the question. Uh, we only have virtual capture agents, actually. Okay, and the second question, and we should make that the last one. If you have more questions, feel free to write them down. I ask for that later, but uh, we are running out of time. Um, so the second question is, how do you the matching algorithm work? Um, you actually have may have seen that you can actually control this a little bit. Uh, by default, we just uh, take a look at the runtime of this event, so the actual runtime of this event, uh, take a look at the uh, runtime of scheduled events, and then try to find an intersection of uh, these two. Um, now, you, the additional control you have is that you can say, okay, it needs to at least match the event for 20% or something like this, so to uh, prevent something where your uh, event goes a minute into another event and uh, then this would, would match or something like that. But in general, that's basically it. And of course, you could have something in theory where you have half your event in one scheduled event and half your event in another scheduled event. And if that uh, happens, then the algorithm will just give up because it can't really decide that case and it will fall back to the default one, uh, to, to the default behavior. And that's where you come in and have to still fix the metadata because yeah, you, you can't really decide which one it goes into and you don't want to write it to the wrong one or, or a best worst case even overwrite something existing in there. So yeah, I hope that did answer the question and yeah. Um, I'll go to you through the other ones later on and, and answer them. Um, so feel free to continue that.